I'm sorry, sir. This is not a loan that we can grant. I doubt anyone could grant it, even if they wanted to. Ah, darn. Listen up! This is a rob- Hello, fun bunglers, and welcome to- Oh, God, what happened here? Uh, let's not look at that. Ah, well, I guess it is better than that. Ahem. <clears throat> Welcome to Payday 2, the sequel to... What do you mean there was a game before it? A game where you murder thousands using realistic concepts like crippling alcoholism, drug abuse, and just saying no to death. While stealing enough money to inflate the economies of small countries. But in case you haven't heard of it, I'm gonna give you a quick summary of what it's about. It's about a gang of four. No, wait, five. No, actually, seven. Wait, is that John Wick? The final number is 22. What's the difference between them? Uh, the funny voice lines that you hear occasionally, I, I guess? You're just gonna pick a goofy one until you find a mod that gives you something goofier. Either way, the cast is very expansive and very canonical. Yeah, Fortnite was not the first game to have random ass characters be canon in its universe. In this universe, John Wick is canon and plot relevantly so. Then we have Jacket from Hotline Miami 2, Scarface from a remake that didn't happen, who you can't buy anymore because the license ran out, Jimmy from a mid-movie with a fun gimmick, and H3H3 and his wife Hila? What? And their canon? Suddenly the German mod is not so far-fetched, huh? Anyway, the gang of buffoons steal shit and murder cops. That's really the connecting element between all of it. Now, when you're first starting out, you will be given awful guns that you will literally never use again, and a shit ton of stuff to unlock. But don't worry, it's not that complicated. The game even stops you from playing the actually somewhat challenging difficulties until you're high level enough. So I'm gonna be real quick and explain what affects your gameplay. This is your inventor- Ah, yeah, I should probably explain mods first. So what you're seeing is a reskin mod, most of which are really stupid shit like, uh... This. Ah! Then there are the, ahem, <coughs> essentials because the vanilla HUD for this game tells you about as much as I tell the tax agencies. So modern HUDs are super useful and also way cleaner. They show you a ton of info, like all the cooldowns and status effects that the vanilla HUD just leaves you guessing at. How much armor is this? Um, hmm, 20. Ah, damn, too bad. This is actually 508 armor. Better luck next time, fucko! Then there is the... Uh... Dark side of mods. Since this game literally has no anti-cheat, it's really up to the community to filter out cheaters. And the most common stance with these mods is that you shouldn't use them online. Because they just make the experience easier. Or just remove all the fun. So yeah, after explaining that, we can get back to explaining what the actual fuck is happening. So the most important thing to explain while talking about the game are the two playstyles. Stealth? And loud. In stealth, the main thing you have to worry about is concealment, because unfortunately, you cannot conceal carry a rocket launcher by just hiding it in your mouth. Hmm... Looks good to me! So obviously, the lower the detection risk, the easier the stealth. It is possible to sneak around wearing 30 tons of Kevlar and 2 rocket launchers, but it definitely isn't easy or ideal. This game has extremely advanced stealth mechanics. Thief? More like thief nuts in your mouth. The game really encapsulates the minimum wage security guard experience, where they see the extremely infamous armed killers for like a split second and say, nah, fuck that, I don't get paid enough to care that much. But in case, you know, accidents happen, you can only kill four guards. After you kill one, you have to answer the pager, where the operator will not question the completely different voice that answers until the fifth time they hear it. Then they figure it out and sound the alarm. The civilians are free though. No matter how much Bane or Locke copes and sieves about it, 40k is literally nothing when you have been playing for more than 10 hours. There are two types of stealth heists. The good and the... The good ones understand that waiting 4 minutes in stealth is incredibly boring. The bad ones can't wait to make you sit through a 5 minute drill or hack. 
Every single skill you can get for stealth is a quality of life slash utility skill. Like the drill skills to make them work faster with pure sheer brain power. Or ECM skills to turn off cameras and delay pagers, which somehow does not arouse suspicion. And the weapons you want are just anything you can hide well and put a silencer on. And a shotgun, because of the mega janky engine this game was made on, whenever you shoot someone with a shotgun, you launch their bodies into the stratosphere, and it can help with hiding bodies. Now, loud is more interesting, since you pretty much use all of the mechanics of the game. The basics being health, which is used to indicate how many bullets you can fit in your stomach and can be increased by thinking really hard with the different perk decks, using a lot of different techniques like crippling alcoholism, drug abuse, and severe obesity combined with returning to monkey. Somehow, convincing a police officer to murder his pals both gives you health and heals you over time. Then we have armor, which is surprisingly used to tank less bullets than health usually. Obviously heavier armor gives you more armor, but a super important mechanic of it is whenever you take damage that destroys your armor, it cannot overflow to your health. Meaning that speed suing your suit is superior to just wearing regular Kevlar 90% of the time. Then there is a mechanic that this game is famous for, dodge, which allows you to turn immaterial to avoid getting shot. Sometimes. Dodge is famous or infamous for being gambling addict bait, because just like a coin flip, since the odds are 50%, you will only get hit every other bullet. Or maybe not. Still, it's a very unique mechanic that's really fun because of the gamble. Health, armor, and dodge. These three stats are the most important stats your character has. The other thing that has stats that matter a bunch are your weapons. All the weapons are usable, though you will soon find the most important stat of them all that the game tells you nothing about. Ammo pickup. Ammo pickup determines how much ammo you can plunder off of dead bodies. And you will be surprised what these cops carry. Minigun ammunition? No problem, here's 30 bullets. Ammo for an M4? What are you, crazy? You know we're in a recession, right? Here, have four. Once you find a weapon you like, the important stats are stability, accuracy, and concealment. Stability determines how shaky your camera gets while firing, so if it's low, you will get motion sickness. Accuracy determines if your shot actually go where you pointed, so other than with shotguns that work well with low accuracy, you usually want it high. Then concealment. As explained earlier, it helps with your detection risk, and while it doesn't matter that much for sneaking purposes, it does matter because there are two skills that want low detection risk for bonuses like crit and more dodge. Other than guns, you can choose a throwable, like a grenade, flashbang, or perk deck specific one, and a deployable. Deployables are things that are mostly used to help your whole team, like heal- ah! Bad Dallas, bad Dallas, go back. This meme is so old. Anyway, healing, more basic healing, ammo, and body bag. There are also more direct use deployables like turrets and ECM jammers. Oh, really? Oh wow, I never noticed, because they are garbage, and not even in a meta sweat way. Armor bags and ordnance bags are shit. Armor bags let you put on armor during a heist instead of before. Do I need to explain why that's stupid? No, no I don't. You always go into a heist with the armor you want already, so it's absolutely pointless. The ordnance bag lets you refill your throwables, but that is infinitely inferior to every other type of bag. I already talked about some skills, but I didn't really explain what they were and how they worked, so I'm gonna do it now. As you level up, you get more and more skills that you can spend to improve different things. For example, all the weapon categories have skills to improve them. You can give your assault rifles and SMGs more ammo by simply pushing harder to squeeze the bullets in the mag. Or you can give your sniper bullets an AOE effect on headshot. Skills are really what makes your build what it is, but perk decks are what decides which skills you will need, and also what the playstyle is gonna be like. And there are a ton of them. So I'm just gonna quickly explain some of the more interesting and my favorite ones. First of all, Anarchist. Remember when I said that if you take damage that breaks your armor, the excess does not damage your health? Yeah, this perk deck is all about that. With its constant armor regen no matter the situation and damage turning into armor, it lets you always have at least SOME armor that can break and save your life. It also has a 2 second god mode when your armor is broken. With a 15 second cooldown, 
Though for all this power you lose most of your HP, so I suppose you replace some organs with more cloth to take the bullets? But since you don't care about your HP, you can utilize a skill for a ton of extra damage by setting yourself on fire. Ah! Uh, at least now I deal 96% more damage. But ouch! The other perk deck that I want to talk about is Stoi, where you can use the power of alcoholism to destroy your enemies. It turns all damage into damage over time and lets you heal by taking a swig. Can confirm, it does not work in real life. While you do get all the upsides of crippling alcoholism like being able to take 15 bullets and survive with a swig, the downside is that you don't get any armor. You get the idea of perk decks, they make builds extremely varied and makes them completely different to play. Now that you maybe kinda understand how the fuck you play this game, let's talk about the sto- OW! The story of this game is fucking Black Ops Zombies level of WHAT?! Let me show you my point. Oh hey, a museum with a bunch of weird fake artifacts. Wow, look at this big guy. Anyway, time to steal this diamond for a perfectly normal guy. Actually, none of these are fake. They are real fallen angels and artifacts that the secret society that hides their existence owns. Yeah, you heard me. Fallen angels. Like Old Testament fallen angels. Which means that either in the Payday universe, the Old Testament was a cover-up for some alien race that came to Earth, did a bunch of weird shit and died, or God is a canon character. Now the diamond you're stealing sure is worth a lot. Let's see what that is. Oh, it's an ancient artifact owned by Marie Antoinette and... Who? What the fuck? It cannot get worse than this. Let's see who is contracting the mission. A guy called the Dennis. Okay, cool. Seems normal enough. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Uh the Dennis is a semi-immortal being who keeps being reborn using some sort of fallen angel bullshit, and he wants to be reborn into the body of the President of the United States to rule the world. Wasn't this a game about bank robberies and the like? What makes it more confusing is that your average player will see bits of the story out of order since they're scattered among a ton of different heists and most people play them out of order. <sighs> Let's move on from the story. If you actually want to know, check out that 4 hour video. Now there is a downside to this game, a quite sizable one at that. And no, I don't mean all the bugs and little things. I mean... this. Yeah, this game has a little bit of a DLC problem. Thankfully, the game does go on sale decently often, and the pack with all the DLCs can go down to a slightly less unreasonable price, but still, yikes. If you do fork over all that money or know someone who already did, you get access to all the 78 heists the game has to offer. From all the different contractors, like Bane, the organizer of the gang and the one that has to deal with the boring part of setting shit up. Hector, who had fun heists but then fucking dies because the real rat was the friends we made along the way. Locke, one of the community favorites and just the right amount of British to not be bad the butcher who gives two really bad heists and then a good one and is never heard from again. Gus Fr- I'm sorry, the dentist, which is the best contractor in the game, not only because he has some of the best heists in the game, but also because he is played by Giancarlo Esposito. The elephant, who is a corrupt politician, so far so normal, but also one of the three of the secret society. The other one being the dentist, and the last one being Vlad, who is just as stereotypical as you would think from his name, and somehow one of the big three of the secret society. Then we have some more minor ones, like the Texas Stereotype 1 and 2, the two members of the fucking on the triad squad. Finally, we have the movie tie-ins, like the Continental, which provides Continental coins to the tune of hundreds to the payday gang, and has two fun heists. And then... Jimmy. The only heister and contractor who makes you steal an EMP, and then copy data from clones in Russia to fight against a psychic generic bad guy, you know, just in case the canon was too coherent. To finish off, we have the community. Now, I honestly enjoy the game solo decently, especially because the bots are OP as fuck. But you have to know that this ain't no DRG. There are four types of people who play this game. 
The cheater who for whatever reason thinks that joining a lobby with every skill in the game unlocked is a good idea. The super toxic egomaniacs who treat any mistake like you just did their mom. The rare cool person that you joke around with on this extremely silly game. And the normal people who don't play the highest difficulty. But once you get used to it, you, you can't go back. Trust me, don't start. You can't go back. <sighs> Let's see what the take was. What the fuck? This isn't even 1% of what I need. It will take forever like this. Wait, what if I... Perfect. You'll be behind bars till the end of days. No, no, no. Officer, look. I don't know anything. See? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. It must have been another banana. Oh, wow. I really did not think that would work. I guess I never have to worry about that again. Time to go get more of it. I really should have tried that sooner. Anyway, this game gets a solid player graph comparison out of 10. Now like and subscribe or... I will change your clocks every day by 1 minute and 37 seconds for 5.7 years.